Howdy Banjo Ben here, along with Mr. Jake Stogdale out here at Banjo Ben's General Store. We want to show you the top six things that you as a mandolin buyer need to know before purchasing your instrument. You know, Jake, buying a mandolin, especially buying a mandolin online can be a scary proposition and folks just need to be educated on what to ask these stores mm -hmm. um, regarding what they inspect and how they set up the instruments. Sure. We just want to show people a few of those things. What's the first thing that you look for? Well, what we do first when you take it out of the case or the box, just kind of an overall inspection. Mm -hmm. Ob that, that's an obvious one though, but like specifically things we would look for on a mandolin would uh, be the neck joint. You know, is the neck joint good and solid? There's no separation mm -hmm. there. Um, overall, there's no cracks. You know, a mandolin, um, most of the mandolins you would find have these arch tops and backs. Uh, that's kind of a unique feature of a mandolin. And so, you know, making sure that that has the proper radius like they're supposed to, that nothing has gone wrong and made the top sink or caused mm -hmm. any cracks, things like that. So yeah, just first of all, an overall inspection. And then when we're doing that, we'll check the strings and if, you know, if they're old, we'll pitch them and put new ones on. Cool. Number two, Jake, we're gonna look at the tuning machines, aren't we? Yes, we are, very right. closely. Um, Obviously, we want to make sure that uh, none of the little wood screws that hold the mm -hmm. tuning machines in are stripped out. Sometimes the factory, you know, they're in a hurry to punch these things out and they can over tighten those. And so we look at that, repair any of those. Uh, and then beyond that, you know, just is the tuner functional? Right. Does it hold tune? Does it work well? Do the they're, buttons slip? Yeah. Right. Does the gear slip, the worm yeah. gear, you know, things like that. So, um, you know, we want them to work. And there's, there's different expectations of how smooth a tuner would turn based on the price point of the right. instrument. But we want them to be functional nonetheless. Cool. So. Number three is going to be the nut and the slots within the nut. Why is that important, Jake? Um, that's probably the most overlooked thing at most shops is because it's, it, it's kind of tedious to mm -hmm. do it right. right. And so, first of all, when inspecting the nut, you know, we'll make sure everything's centered and fits well and there's no, you know, cracks or splintering where mm -hmm. they've cut the slots. That's obvious in the first thing. Uh, beyond that, we need to make sure these slots are both the proper height mm -hmm. and the proper um, angle. Okay. Because um, if you don't have the right angle on the slot, that string's gonna buzz in the slot. And if you don't have the right height, it's gonna make the instrument so much harder to play. So often that's the case, isn't it? It is. have a hard time playing their instrument. And it's a nut issue many more, times. More often than not, if someone comes in with you know an instrument they need us to set up, they if they're complaining about a string going sharp, Mm -hmm. whenever they noted up at this end close to the nut, it's because the nut's too tall and it's taking, it's essentially stretching the string to get it down to the fret. Yeah, so you folks can ask the retailer, have you inspected the nut? What do those nut slots look like? What about the angles uh, that the slots are cut in? And if they don't know what you're talking about, maybe it's time to look for a new store. Yeah. Number four is the neck, and that includes several different factors. Tell us about them. There, there's a few factors here, yeah. Um, so we want the neck to have the proper relief and what that is is the uh the amount of, of curvature bow there. curvature mm -hmm. you would have here so we'll sight down it um you know we'll make sure it's not twisted out of reason sometimes on lower end stuff you get an x really twisted and we reject that well obviously right. we don't send that out um but you know assuming everything's good there we want just the right amount of relief like this mm -hmm. so we get proper strain clearance and in order to adjust that relief that's done via the truss rod which is on man virtually all mandolins located under the plate on the headstock so we make sure that that works correctly make sure the truss rod's functioning correctly because sometimes like we've talked about in manufacturers rushes they can break those mm -hmm. or install a faulty one mm -hmm. um, so we make sure that's good beyond that uh, we do check the level of the frets Make sure the frets are good and level, that they're all seated properly. We don't have any sticking up. And if we have to, it's, it's not super common we have to do this because most of these manufacturers are pretty good about this now. But if we have to, we'll file all the frets level, make sure they're seated and recrown them, and then also dress the ends of the frets. Yeah. That's something that's often overlooked. Even if there's no other problem, sometimes those edges can just be really sharp. Mm. So we want to make sure they're nice and smooth cool. so you can get your power slides. You know. <laughs> Number five would be the mandolin bridge. What are we looking for, Jake? All right, well, the mandolin bridge is different than, say, a guitar because mm -hmm. it's a floating design. In other words, if I take the strings off, that bridge is just going to fall mm -hmm. on the floor. So um, when we're looking at the bridge, there's a few things we look at. We want to make sure that the, the curvature of the feet are flush with the curvature of the top. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to see any gaps in there or anything. If you're looking through it, you don't want to see... 
a tremendous amount of light, except in the middle. The way the bridge is designed, you will have an arch in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, we do the same thing with the bridge slots that we did with the nut okay. slots to make sure they've got the right pitch so we don't have any buzzing in the slots. Um, then we have to set the intonation, which means where this bridge is placed will determine um, if the string plays in tune all the way up the fretboard. Mm -hmm. um, and so ideally you want it to be an equal distance from the 12th fret to the nut as it is from there to the bridge. That's at least a rough starting point. We want it centered between the F holes if it's an F hole mm -hmm. model. And then uh, the bridge height itself. We want to make sure most, most mandolin bridges have uh, a height adjustable component with these little wheels here. Mm -hmm. So you can adjust, raise and lower the height of the saddle piece to make sure you have proper string clearance on the fret. Cool. So and if you want to learn more about that, we have tech tips on how to do that yourself at home. Yep. Finally, number six, we need to look at the mandolin tailpiece. What do you think, Jake? Yeah. Um, concerning the tailpiece, you know, we want to make sure that all the wood screws, like we talked about with the tuners, are not stripped, um, that the end pin fits well. This is subject to change depending on climate. Some, these are just a taper fit. Sometimes they can get a little dry and fall out. And we've got a tech tip on how to fix yep. that yourself. It's real simple. Um, we make sure it's centered and you know it's, it's holding well. And then all the strings attach to a little hook. Mm -hmm. And on, on a tailpiece like this, this is a very substantial tailpiece. You wouldn't have any problems. But on some of your more traditional tailpieces, it's just stamped sheet metal. And those bend. hooks can bend yep. or even break off. Um, over time, uh, sometimes straight from the manufacturer, we have you know we have to replace. Yeah, those. You just need to look and make sure they're not stressed, creased, right. things of that nature. Yeah, so just make sure it's in you know good shape for many years to come. Um, awesome. Yep, just just the eyeball test. Well, that's it, y'all. Those are top six things for you to look for if you're getting ready to purchase a mandolin, or if you're buying online to ask your retailer to make sure and check out before they ship it to you. Um, if you like this video, make sure and comment below. Um, tell us what else you might look for in a mandolin when you're shopping. Also, be sure and subscribe, like, share. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure and hit the little bell and you'll be notified of more videos just like this one that we put out all the time.